Welcome to the Know It All for the week of May 22nd. We've got cheaters being publicly shamed, accusations of sabotage in the video game industry, and Sega throwing shade at some of its own games. And to be perfectly honest, that's pretty much it. We're knee deep in the annual news drought that always precedes E3, so today's show is like a hookup in the office supply storage room. Quick, dirty, and hopefully not loud enough to draw the attention of the entire office. Let's knock off all the sticky notes off all the shelves with video game news. This week saw the release of the highly anticipated Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, and while most were singing the game's praises from the highest mountaintops in all the land, or at the very least tweeting a bunch about it, there was one group of Witcher fans who were sorely disappointed. The Witcher 3 was set to be the first title in the series localized for Korea out of the box. The game's Steam page even listed Korean as an available language, but the language was not included in the game. CD Projekt Red issued an apology and blamed the language's omission on an unforeseeable technical issue. They promised to patch in the language this week and even offered Korean gamers the first two Witcher titles for free, but their failure to communicate the lack of Korean until after the game was actually already available for purchase still left some in a huff. And I mean, honestly, they had a right to be angry, but two free games is pretty sweet. Another group of gamers having difficulty enjoying The Witcher 3 were PC gamers running AMD graphics cards. This story is fairly lengthy, it includes a bit of backstory, so if you're interested in the full screw, please check out the full update. The TLDR version is basically AMD users are seeing a huge drop in frame rate thanks to a GameWorks program called Hairworks, like a drop from 75.8 frames per second to 29.4, so yeah, it's a pretty big deal. The reason for the choke is that Hairworks, which makes hair look super nice and pretty in the game, cannot be optimized for AMD cards. That led to AMD's chief video game scientist, again sweet title, to accuse NVIDIA, which is behind GameWorks, of including the program with the sole intention of sabotaging AMD's performance. For its part, CD Projekt Red has urged AMD users to simply disable the program, but it's very clear there's some serious animosity between the two graphics giants. From accusations of foul play to those who commit foul play actually getting some harsh justice, Daybreak Game Company banned roughly 30,000 players this week for cheating. The company's president, John Smedley, then issued a challenge to those who'd been banned, apologize, and you may be unbanned from H1Z1, but it couldn't be any lame apology. It had to come in the form of a public YouTube video, which Smedley would then tweet out to his followers. Now, of the 30,000 banned, only five were eventually pardoned. Many, myself included, questioned the practice some said it went too far, some say it didn't go far enough. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Moving right along, Sega announced earlier this month that it'd be removing 19 of its offerings in the iOS and Android stores, and this week, they finally went bye-bye. The games include a ton of Super Monkey Ball titles, including 1, 2, Adventure, Tip and Tilt 1 and 2, Touch and Roll, and Banana Splits. So many monkeys, so many balls, all of them gone. Sega hasn't ruled out the possibility the games may come back, but it doesn't seem too likely. And finally, the second Destiny expansion, The House of Wolves, was released this week, and the fellows over at Foon House combed over every single thing included in it and how to find it. There's a ton of information in their update, and you can download it all to your brain by clicking the annotation. That's all for video game news this week, and all news really, so if you're looking for more video game news and discussion, check out this week's episode of The Patch, where Ashley, Ryan, and Gus participate in one of the most dangerous drinking games of all time. Ooh, that one's smaller. Give me that one. Hearthstone. Oh, God. Oh, so good. That was real. That was real. I don't know. It's 10 a.m. I should have done that. Oh, now I have to read more script. Okay. Moving on this week on the Patch Game Club, we played Crypt of the Necrodancer. If you missed the stream, we actually got Gus to do it, and it was super fun. Next week's game is going to be awesome, so check out the full update to find out what it is. And last but not least, if eSports are more your speed, this week on the leaderboard, Jared and I talked about Optic Gaming getting back to their winning ways and Link's epic 18-page mic drop. It burns in my belly. That's all for the know-it-all this week, so don't forget you can get even more awesome Rooster Teeth content by checking out the RT Podcast on Monday nights, the patch on Wednesday, and of course you get the news hot and fresh over on the know. Have a good weekend, everyone. Oh, it hurts my belly.